Hey creepy comrades, a little while ago I posted a video about the vampire ball in Tyler, Texas, and this is what I decided to wear to the event. But I felt like something was missing, so I set out to make a belt for the occasion. First, I needed to measure roughly how long the belt would need to be. Then, I taped some paper together that I'd draw my design onto. and cut it to the appropriate length before folding it in half. I then started drawing out the outline of the belt on one half. I didn't really have a full idea of what I wanted the shape to be, but along the way I decided I wanted the front to look like a bat. Once I had the shape figured out, I sharpied and copied it to the other half of the paper. Before cutting it out, I added more tape to make sure it all stayed together and started planning out the lines for the bat wings. Once I was satisfied with that, I cut it out. I decided to put the paper outline on the outfit to see how it looked, as well as making sure it fit on my waist properly before proceeding to make the actual belt. I thought the wingspan was a little bit wide, so I made a mental note to leave off the outer section of the wings. I have a ton of this faux leather material laying around, so I decided to use it as my base. I simply traced the outline onto it and cut it out. You'll see I left extra material on the ends of the belt. That'll be important later. Next, I wanted to glue this purple pattern fabric onto the faux leather, but I've learned from past projects that most glues won't stick to this stuff, so I'm using E6000 glue. I also didn't want a bunch of bumps showing up on the fabric, so I did my best to smooth out and flatten the glue. Then, I press the fabric onto it, making sure to smooth it out before repeating this all on the other half.
With that done, I let it dry for a couple of hours. I wanted to add some more structural integrity to the bat shape on the front. I used some of this plastic canvas I've had laying around. I'm sure there's a number of other materials that would have worked better for this, but I didn't have time to drive two hours to the nearest craft store. Anyway, I traced the bat shape onto the plastic canvas and cut it out before gluing it into place with more E6000. Next, I cut off the excess purple fabric, leaving about half an inch extra to fold over later. I also made sure to cut notches in the curved and cornered areas to make the folding easier before gluing them down. Some areas didn't want to stay down, so I had to use clothespins. Now I wanted to add some extra subtle layer to the fabric with this fine mesh material. It probably isn't a very noticeable difference on camera, but in person it just gives it a little extra something to the fabric that I can't quite explain. So using fabric adhesive, I went around the edge of the belt and put two layers of the mesh onto it. To keep it pressed down, I put some sheets of plastic on top that I figured the adhesive wouldn't stick to once dry. After a couple of hours, I came back and carefully peeled the plastic off. A little bit of the glue did stick to them, but overall, I'd consider it a success. I just needed enough to keep the mesh in place for the next part. Now, like the fabric, I cut off the excess mesh, but left a lot more to fold over. Just to be safe. This stuff is kind of flimsy. Back to using E6000 because my crafter trust issues are flaring up and I want to make sure that this stuff doesn't go anywhere. With the mesh chemically nailed down to the belt, I start cutting strips of black lace that'll form the lines of the bat wings.
and with fabric glue, I put them in place. For some sections, I had to hold them down with pins until the glue dried. From there, I lined the edges of the belt with lace as well. And once it was all dry, I took the pins out and gave the bat green jewel eyes. With that done, I get another strip of the faux leather and cut it out, this time making sure to cut a little bit on the inside of the outline. This is going to be the inside of the belt, so we don't want its edges showing on the outside. Now on the back ends of the belt, I applied a generous amount of E6000. We're getting to the part where we really want to start holding things together. Then I folded that excess portion of the belt that I mentioned earlier would be important. To make sure it really got a good hold, I clamped it down to dry for a few hours. And once again repeated it on the other end. With those glued down, I made sure the back piece was lined up properly and held it down with a clamp to keep it where it needs to be, as well as cutting off the unneeded material. Now, working in sections, I applied even more generous amounts of E6000. With Gaia as my witness, this belt will never come apart. And since this is a belt, it'll spend much of its time in a curved position. I wanted to make sure the inner lining wouldn't bunch up while being worn, so I let it dry in a slightly curved position.
Once all of that was finished drying, I started punching holes for the eyelets in the back. The holes I punched were slightly too small for the eyelets I had on hand, and I struggled to get them to fit, but I found an effective method for getting them through the holes. I placed the inward facing half of the eyelet on an awl tool and worked it through the hole until the eyelet went in. Then I slid the other half onto the spike and using scissors to hold the first half in place, I slid the tool out, making sure to push the second half in as it goes. From there, I hammered them together. And finally, it was time to lace it up. After messing with it for a bit, I cut off the excess. And that's the bat belt finished. All that was left was to wear it to the vampire ball. And if you're curious about that event, I made a video about it that you can check out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, feel free to stick around for future DIYs. I have a lot more planned. And until next time, bye!